So it is important to know if you are crying broke or you are actually broke. So identifying the two differences, it, it's, it's going to open up your eyes to a whole new world. So crying broke is money blocks, money trauma, issues with the relationships in the past surrounding money, your parents, your spouse, your yourself, um, buying in it more expensive things to make yourself feel better, whatever that may be. So that's crying broke. Now, being broke, guess what? You have the underdog advantage because even the most successful people, they say act effing broke. Even if you're not, the most successful people act broke. So when you're looking at the cabinets and it's empty and you don't know how to feed your family, are you going to work harder than if you had won the lottery and you have millions of dollars? Of course, you're going to work harder if you're broke, right? You need to feed your family. So act broke, even if you're not. Decide the difference between crying broke. And if you really are broke, come up with the top five money-making activities that you can do today to get started. So if you're a mortgage lender, I'll give you some tips. Start sending 10 video text messages per day to whoever. So these are authentic connections that you want to make with somebody. Happy birthday, life events, things that are going on with people that you see on social media. Now, if you're crying broke and you're saying, I don't even know who to call or what to say. I don't have people's phone numbers in my phone. What is this crazy lady talking about? You can actually go in your Facebook messenger, hit the camera and send a video through Facebook messenger and let them know, hey, it's Tiffany, happy birthday. I saw it was your birthday. Instead of just commenting on your page, I did that, but I also wanted to say happy birthday. Make this the best day ever, week ever, but also the best year ever. Authentically communicate with people because you never know. There's a, a book called The Customer is Born. There's a customer born every minute. So every single person that you build a relationship with, you show that you care, you serve, and you share the love, right? For this human being on the other end, it has to come through authentically, first of all. If you're doing it for the money, it'll turn to dust in your hands before you can even blink. But if you're doing this with compassion, you never know the law of attraction. I'm very big about talking about law of attraction. Never know about that person on the other end that goes, Oh my gosh, that's so crazy because I just remembered Tiffany's a mortgage lender. She said happy birthday to me. I was just deciding if I should get out of that rent cycle and buy. And here she is in my Facebook messenger, sending me a personalized video. So you never know. Send 10 video texts a day for every single day. That's 50 people that are going to see your face, hear your energy, see your energy, feel it. Remember high energy equals high income. One of my best mentors, Krista Mayshore, taught me that and it is one of the most tried and true tactics to bring the people in authentically and uh, get on the same frequency as them, right? So again, are you crying broke where you're a victim and the world is out to get you and you just blew your money and you don't know why you don't have any left in the bank or are you really struggling? Now, in this mortgage industry, absolutely mortgage lenders are suffering if they are not doing innovative digital marketing things. If their mindset isn't right, I believe that 75% is mindset, 25% is skill set. So I could give you all the strategy in the world, but if your mind isn't right and you're slipped into that victim mentality or otherwise um, known as spiraling down that kind of frequency where everything just goes to anger and guilt and shame and blame and again, that victim mentality, or are you spiraling up and changing and shifting your mindset? So be real clear about where you are in the present moment, not what rates are doing, not how much money you have in your account. What I mean by that is what are you doing in the present moment for those money making activities? Write down five ways, sending 10 video text messages, Facebook messenger or people, just whomever on your phone, start at A and work your way down, right? And you will be golden. So as a mortgage lender, it's very important to know are you crying broke or are you actually broke, right? So here's the difference. If you're crying broke because you blew your money, you didn't save enough in 2020, you're not doing money-making activities and you're just slipping into that victim role, that's crying broke. That's money blocks from your past, family uh, relationships around money, uh, tr money trauma. Remember, money is currency. Money is called currency uh, because there's an energy to it. Money carries that energy. So if you're stuck with these energetic negative bonds with money, that's crying broke. Now, I understand completely that some of us in the mortgage lending industry are actually not doing so well or otherwise broke. So here's something important to know. 
the most successful, richest people act broke. I read something on Instagram. It said, act effing broke. Even if you have tons of money in the bank, act broke. Wake up every single day, act like you have no food to feed your family and no money in the bank, right? So which one are you? It's so important to assess that. Now, here's what to do about it. Pick Five money-making activities every single day that you know you can do right now in the present, not about the future, what rates are doing, looking at the market and praying and hoping that rates are going to go down or whatever happened to you in the past or, you know, blaming yourself for not saving enough money in 2020. That's crying broke, by the way. Taking, taking care of yourself and figuring out what are the five money-making activities. So let me give you a few to get your creative juices flowing. Number one, sending 10 video text messages per day to anyone. Now, you might say, Tiff, I don't know, have everyone's phone number in my phone or past clients or who do I send this to? Great question. I'm glad you asked. You can actually go on Facebook Messenger. Most people have Facebook. If you don't, as a lender, you're on the wrong business, right? So go on Facebook. You go on Messenger. There's a little video there that you can send a video directly to somebody. Go research whose birthdays are going on. There's an easy way to filter today's birthdays in Facebook. Here's what you're going to say. Hi, Tiffany, Guild Mortgage. Just want to let you know that I saw it was your birthday and I'm making it a point to make sure that I reach out directly to people when I see it's their birthday and not just comment happy birthday on their Facebook page. So I've done that also, but I'm sending you something personally. So I love what you're doing. I saw that you went on vacation. You're moving mountains at your job, whatever you want to say, any kind of life event that's going on that you've seen on their Facebook or simply just wishing them a happy birthday if you don't know them personally or don't know any life event. Then you can say, so wishing you a great birthday, make it a great day, a great week. And you know what? Make it a great year. This is your year. Happy birthday. That's it. You don't ask for referrals. You don't bother them with anything and be authentic, right? Everybody can see right through you if you're just doing it for the money. So if you're doing it for the money, the universe knows it. You know me, I'm all about law of attraction. If you don't know me, I'll tell you right now, I am 100% in belief that everything is energy that's scientifically proven and that the universe gives us what we need. And when we are serving and loving and coming from a place with an open heart, that's when the universe provides us with things. So if you are doing it for the money, I can assure you, the money will turn to dust in your hands faster than you can blink. All right. So you serve, you love, you reach out to people, you wish them happy birthday. And, hey, I saw that you just had a baby. Oh my gosh, congratulations. I remember when my first baby was born. This is how I felt. I'm sure you're tired, but you know what? You're, I know you're a great parent. You're pushing through. Go for it. Have fun. I hope you're doing well. Whatever. Congrats. So come up with something that's, that's authentic and that's showing the other person that you actually care. Nobody wants to hear, buy my thing, buy my thing, apply for a loan, call me with mortgage questions, do this and that, book a Calendly link. You start sending 10 video text messages a day. That's 50 of them a week. Now, nobody cares if you don't have makeup on or whatever. It's all about the value and the service and sharing the love or the education or whatever you're doing. So life events, um, updating somebody, maybe a past client of, hey, I know you got a great rate, but here's what I'm finding in the market and here's a client that I've helped. So down payment assistance is doing X, Y, and Z, or a lot of parents that have the 2.875 rent, you know, estimated rate now, and they close, they can actually pull money out and help their millennial child get into a home and get out of the rent cycle. There's so many things that you can say on video text. We have so much as lenders that are in our brain that we've moved mountains on and problem solve, like who's better problem solvers than mortgage lenders, right? I don't even think real estate agents have to problem solve as much as we do in the little nuts and bolts in the guidelines, right? I think we can all agree. Put it in the comments below if you agree with me, by the way, because I know for a fact that we have moved mountains. So 10 video texts, pull those awesome things out of your brain and just start going for it, right? Another way is picking up the phone and actually calling past clients, checking in on them, uh, updating them on, is, do they have mortgage insurance? Do they, do they have an FHA loan? Now they have plenty of equity where even though rates are higher now, you get rid of the mortgage insurance and uh, refinance them. And at least that's, you know, a ta tax deductible or whatever it is, right? Don't give tax advice, by the way. Just make sure that you get their wheels spinning and always, uh, the wheels turning and always ask if um, that they should run it by a CPA, et cetera. So a little side note there. But anyways, reaching out to people and burning up the phone lines. Our gift is our voice, right? Open up that throat chakra, find out what gifts you have to share, talk about it, 
call your past clients for once, right? If you're guilty, like I've been in the past of never calling a past client again, or you think they have this great rate, reach out, let them know that you're thinking about them, check on them, right? So phone, phone, of course, calling your past clients, uh, video text messages, whether, whether you're doing it on your phone and going A to Z, or you're going on Facebook Messenger and you're going down your followers and just promising yourself you're going to connect with 10 or more people per day. Those are money making activities that you can do right now. Third one, you can go to a networking meeting of some sort, but don't be shy about it. Cut in line with confidence. Walk in there with some value, with some education. Look for my other videos where I talk about what kind of value in education that real estate agents, homeowners, people at networking meetings, how to co-collaborate with their title company. Pick, pick, figure out something. Getting tongue twisted there. Figure out something that is a money-making activity right now. Green time, green time, green time, right? And go for it. It's magical. Do it today. Do it now. Be a doer. Don't be a jack of all trades. Master it none. Do it now. Time block and do one, at least one of those three things. And you're going to get out of that broke mentality or literally get out of the broke bank account and you're going to move mountains. I believe in you. Be a doer and go for it. If you are a parent of an adult child, and you are loving life because you have that two something, three something percent and you bought in 2020 or 2021 and life is great, right? But you see your adult children stuck in the vicious rent cycle. Let me tell you something, rents are only going up. So yes, rates went up, housing prices are going up and down, but trust me, investing in real estate is the best gift that you can give for your children. That's no sales pitch, that's no line. My parents paid for two weddings, right? I have a sister. I actually got married twice also. So my parents paid for more than two weddings. Have they taken that money and helped me buy a house when I was 18, co-sign when I had roommates instead of paying down someone else's, some landlord's uh, mortgage, if they would have given me that for a down payment on the house and educated themselves on the kind of products that are available, like an FHA loan, which those were around back then. It's just, it wasn't used for a long time, especially leading up to 2007. It was all negam loans and all that stuff, right? So no shame, no blame. Don't go blaming your parents for not investing in real estate uh, for you. But what you can do is use your equity as a gift for maybe what your parents did or didn't do for you and the knowledge that you've gained on the power of real estate in any market. You can do one of three things. So here's how you can help. You either can Co-sign for them. If you don't want to give them money, some people are like, I'm not giving my kids no, no money, no way, but I know that I will pay that mortgage if, if they don't pay it. So you can co-sign for a loan and help them out income-wise. Let me give you a tip on this. If they don't make enough money to afford a house on their own and they're just getting started, you can look into things like if, they, if you're scared to have a roommate with them or they, they don't want that, they like their alone time or whatever's going on, you can help them buy a duplex. You can co-sign, they'll have their own space and you can rent out the other side of the duplex. So it'll help pay the mortgage. Um, you know, I could walk you through the process on, especially if you come to me for the loan, I am licensed in California and Nevada. However, uh, corporate, I have licensing throughout the whole United States, right? I think just not Mississippi. So if you're watching this and you're in uh, Mississippi, I believe we can't do that there. So come to me, we'll create a plan where I can remind you to make sure if you're going to plan to have renters that are helping paying the mortgage uh, for your adult child, or you're doing that duplex plan that I just mentioned, make sure you run credit for the potential person and uh, get this correct security deposit, no pets. I'm a big fan of having no pets because I had a golden retriever some one upon the time with one of my rentals that just annihilated the carpet and it was so expensive and I didn't take a big enough deposit. So reach out to me directly if you're thinking about embarking on a journey like that where you're helping your child co-sign to buy a bigger house or a duplex and you're going to be renting out either rooms or the other side of the duplex. So that's one way you can help your adult children get out of the rent cycle, right? Because rents are going up, rates are going up, but I'd way rather see them uh, buy a property and uh, get into that house and get out of that rent cycle and have the tax write-off, the potential for appreciation. And every month that they pay the mortgage, the principal balance goes down, right? So there's so many perks to it. Now, what I was saying with uh, with the uh, with me being married in the past. So if my parents gave me money, 
uh, for the mortgage and help me buy a house, right? I would have been able to pay for, God, I've made millions in the real estate industry now. I would have been able to pay for wedding after wedding after wedding. So if you help your child at 18 years old, 19 years old, 20, or even if they're a millennial and they need that assistance, when it comes time where they have that spouse or they want to get married and someone else is going to pitch in, they already own all of that equity, right? So lots of different ways. I would love to brainstorm with you on that part. Number two, you can give them gift funds. So you can actually take money from your own bank account, 401k IRA, and you can gift them money. You sign a gift letter saying that you're giving that to your child and that they aren't required to pay you back. If they're required to pay you back, then we have to get notes drawn up and all these things and debt service them for that monthly payment, all of that. So if you're willing to gift your child the funds for the down payment, it makes it open up opportunities for them to actually have a down payment and be able to get in. There's three and a half percent down for FHA uh, loans. There's down payment assistance where all you have to do is cover just the closing costs. There's numerous ways that you can help them get in. So another way to do it is by doing this. So another way of helping your adult children is by having them find a roommate, for example, that you trust, a family friend, somebody that they're actually willing to move in together and split the mortgage payment. So it's kind of like, uh, let's see, how do I how do I explain what this is? So it's kind of like an arranged roommate situation, right? So if you have somebody that you trust, a family friend, you know, kids that are the same age, you, you saw them grow up together, in it introduce the idea for them to get a uh, room, be roommates together and um, and split the mortgage and they both go on where they're uh, you know co-signers on it so that what it is is it's non-married co-borrowers so you don't have to be married to go on the loan uh, together at the same time so have them go find a friend if they're going to go rent and pay off some landlord's house they may as well work on buying a house together right but a lot of the times they need your blessing or they need you to actually guide them and show them that's an opportunity that's available so i hope that helps uh, reach out to me with questions. I would love to work with you and your adult children and help them make tons of money in the real estate industry, even if it's their first property. Here are three top misconceptions of first time home buyer loans. All right. Number one, that you have to have perfect credit. That is simply not true. You can have way imperfect credit. So I have helped people with below 620 score. Uh, certain programs go down to a 580 score. I also offer the help to do, a, we're allowed to at Guild Mortgage, we're allowed to do rapid rescores where we help them improve their credit score, right? Certain programs allow that. A lot of the times the customer isn't even paying for services like that. So I can help if you just take the leap and ask the question, I can help you uh, improve your credit or maybe you'll get approved for an FHA loan with the lesser credit score. So number two, that you have to call a realtor first. You go on Zillow or realtor.com and you're drinking your wine at night or your tea and you're having a blast looking at properties. You find one that you're absolutely in love with and you call a realtor. Guess what? You don't do that first. That is a huge, huge no-no. Here's why. Because I'm the one that looks at your credit, helps you repair it if there's something that uh, that needs to be uh, done in within your credit scores. Maybe you have a target card that you have $500 limit and you use $500 of it by paying it down just that, that little bit, hundreds of dollars instead of thousands on a bigger credit card, you can actually improve your score just enough to be able to qualify for whatever that tiering is on the product that we're looking for, right? So go to me first because if you are looking for um, the credit score to be uh, repaired, then we can help you with that. Or maybe you don't know what product, maybe you don't know what your monthly payment is. You don't know what the down payment requires for that type of property. There's so many reasons why you to give us the ball first, because we're the ones that come up with a plan and give you the money and issue the pre-approval letter to give to the real estate agent. So a lot of the times a realtor will call me as a lender with their hair on fire. And they're like, oh my gosh, this client called me last night and they found this property on Zillow and they want to make an offer. Can you give me a pre-approval letter? I'm like, no, that is the difference between a pre-qualification and a solid pre-approval letter. It's stressful enough when you're buying real estate to go through this process, especially if you're a first time home buyer. If you are 
um, trying to pack, move, uh, figure out what school districts are good for your kids if you have them and you're gathering up the money, you're getting parents to co-sign or gift funds or all these different things. I'm helping you with your credit. That stress is enough to make your head pop off sometimes. Okay, it's well worth it, but there's a lot of turbulence that can happen during a mortgage loan. So you need to make sure that you're working with a professional. A lot of the times the realtors will uh, send you to their preferred lender and the lender doesn't know what the heck they're doing. So go to a professional so we can devise a plan first, issue that pre-approval, get it fully underwritten, get through all the turbulence and the bumps in the road. So that is removed off your plate. So when you're in contract and you're all jazzed up about the house or stressed about moving and those kind of things I just rattled off, you don't have to deal with this mountain of problems paperwork-wise because most of that's done. Another thing within that number two is that when you make a strong offer, because you've already been fully pre-approved, you've given me pay stubs, W-2s, we know the plan, we're like, all right, let's go make that offer. You can actually beat others out in a low inventory market, which a lot of us are experiencing right now in 2023 across the country. You can actually offer something like a 14 or 21 day close if that's what's important to the seller. So if it's not, then you don't wanna do that. But either way, you wanna make a strong offer where they may say, uh, no, we don't want 14 or 21 days. So let's just do a 30 or 45 or day or 60 close. You can still make your offer strong by offering uh, no loan contingencies or only a seven day loan contingency instead of a 15 or 17 day or whatever is on the contract defaulted or no appraisal contingency because you already know that you're putting 30% down. So if it appraises for a little bit less, you're still getting the same interest rate. It doesn't change your payment. It just changes the appraisal value. And you're okay with that because you found the dream home and you're willing to step up to the plate without it costing you more money, right? You're waiving the appraisal contingency. It doesn't mean that it's costing you more money. So I don't want to blow your mind too much with that because we're talking about you as a first time uh, home buyer here. So number three, that you have to have 20% down. You don't have to have 20% down. That is a huge misconception. There are 3.5% down FHA loans. There's down payment assistance in most of the states. And there's a million ways that you can get gift funds from relatives, um, non-occupant co-signers centers to qualify. The opportunity is endless for first-time homebuyers. There's grants. We have an awesome program right now where you bring in 1% down and there's a 2% grant that gets washed away after a certain amount of time. So take heart if you're a first time home buyer potentially and you're stuck in the rent cycle, you do not have to have 20% down, you do not have to have perfect credit and you darn sure don't call a realtor first, you call Team Tiffany and we will walk you through the process and make it fun, right? I'm a fun girl. You don't know me, but I'm a fun girl. And I bring that into my lending, but I'm also a, a smart girl. I'm also a smart girl. So I will make sure that you get the best service. You can net any lender that promises you that they are going to give you an absolutely smooth process. They're lying. Nobody can promise that. What I can promise you is this, is that there's always going to be turbulence during a plane ride, right? What does the pilot say to you? Pilot says, look, you guys, uh, I, we, we expect it's a smooth ride, but sometimes there's unexpected turbulence. I got to tell you to put on your seatbelt. I want to keep you safe. So enjoy the ride. Hopefully we don't hit too many bumps, but we might, right? Something like that. I've never been a pilot, but anybody who's been on a plane knows that that's what they say. That's what I promise to you, that I promise that if there is turbulence, I will keep you safe. I'll keep you strapped in through the, through the process and I'll make sure that we communicate and I'll get you through as smoothly as possible, right? So don't be afraid of home ownership. It is one of the best gifts you can give yourself, the legacy of generational wealth that you can pass down to your family. It'll help you in times of need and it's the best thing you can do for yourself. So stick with it. Keep getting out there and moving mountains to get qualified and uh, I will see you on the next video. Okay, here's what you need to know. If you are looking to buy a house, please do not call a real estate agent first. Call a lender first. Here's why. Because we are the ones that can come up with a plan Remove as many problems up front before you have your eye on a dream home or your heart set on that property. I come up with a plan. You can do a short uh, contingency removal time. 
uh, maybe waive your appraisal contingency, right? If you want to do that, because you know you have enough money down. We come up with a plan, get rid of everything. Let's say you give me a bank statement and you've transferred money across the globe and we have to go backtrack and go savings account and kids account and all the money you've moved around. I can tell you ahead of time, here's what I need. Here's what we need to wait on or what was this large deposit? You have to talk to a professional lender first. I'm the one that gives you the money so you can go buy the house. Why would you go find the house without the plan for how you're going to get the money for it? There's a lot of misconceptions too. You might be spinning out on, oh my gosh, I need to get 20% down or I have to find uh, my mom to co-sign. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe there's opportunities that you aren't aware of. So you're cutting yourself short by saying, um, you know, I can't qualify for that or that house will never work for me or I need to get a condo. Maybe you don't realize that a condo might have 500 something in HOA dues where the next little level up in, uh, you know, 550,000 instead of a $500,000 house gets you to a single family residence where you don't have HOA dues. So those are the reasons why there's hundreds and hundreds and I've seen it all. I've seen people do things so backwards. It blows my mind. Don't let that be you. Call your lender first and hopefully it's team Tiffany Rose. I am licensed in California, Nevada and corporate. Uh, we can do loans in all of the United States. So call team Tiffany. We've got your back. Here's how to buy a single family residence versus a condo. Let me tell you something. What people don't realize is when you buy a condo, Yes, you have, you know, sometimes the insurance covered within it, but you still have to get renter's insurance. And there's all kinds of things that uh, maybe are little perks, like the gardening service or whatever. But some of these HOA dues are like $500, $600, $700 dollars a month, and they keep going up. If we can come up with a plan of, let's say a condo is $475,000, but there's $700 a month in HOA dues. Now, what does that monthly payment look like? What is the next bump in purchase price that gets you to a single family residence that has zero HOA dues? So think about it like this, a $475,000 condo purchase price equals X amount of mortgage payment plus a five to $700 HOA dues. Figure out the math on that with your lender. Hopefully it's me. Let's look at a single family residence that's $550,000 purchase price, but no HOA dues. I can almost guarantee that if you step into something like that, your payment may even be less than it will be with the condo. It's so important that you call a lender first so you know what the math looks like, what your cash flow, your budget, your timeline, your goals, your dreams, your vision for home ownership looks like. So call Team Tiffany Rose. We're always able to help. And I absolutely love it. I serve from the passion and the purpose that I have in my heart and how long I've been doing this. I've been doing this over 23 years, how much I love helping clients, especially first time home buyers that are stuck in the rent cycle or parents that are watching their adult children stuck in the rent cycle and they're trying to just get them into something. Call team Tiffany Rose, we can help. If you're a mortgage lender and you're in trouble in this market, I have news for you. There's a way out. There's a way to get stuck out of this victim mentality with interest rates going up and, and you, the market's uncertain and the realtors that normally give you the referrals don't have the business. Guess what? All you have to do is this. Go on social media, find a way to get more market share. All right? So a big misconception in the realtor lender relationship is that we go after the realtors assuming that they know how to go get more market share and that they're better marketers than us and that they track leads better than us. Now, some realtors may do it better than lenders, but don't sell yourself short and make that assumption. When you talk about um, to either your organic sphere of influence or running Facebook ads, which I teach in my Ignite Facebook, I'm sorry, my Ignite uh, Mortgage Loan Originator Account Academy, you will learn Facebook ads in that. But sometimes it's just running your, get your organic traffic, right? So one of the most important things that you can do is educating your sphere of influence. When you educate and you do it in an authentic way where you're giving value, no, you're not annoying your friends and family. That's a big misconception. Your friends and family, if you're giving the value of here's what's going on with the rental market, here's how to get out of the rental cycle, cycle. here's three top misconceptions for, for home buyers and or uh, for um, people getting a divorce or whatever it is. When you're educating 
and you're building that organic traffic and they're beginning to know you, like you, and trust you, you're going to move mountains. Now, Facebook ads, like I said, uh, I teach that in Ignite Mortgage Loan Originator Academy. That's in my coaching program. But if you're not there yet, I'm telling you, if you start posting education, education, value, 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 and just serving people in your sphere of influence, most people have 1,000, 1,500 people on Facebook that you're uh, closely related to that already, already know you, like you, and trust you, right? So if you go work on that and you build that relationship, you're going to be able to get more market share without relying on the realtor. Let me tell you this. If you step into the victim mentality during this time in the market, all you're going to do is make yourself spiral, spiral down. All you're going to do is stop yourself from getting empowered by this time and using this time to recession proof your business and level the heck up. Start doing videos, video, video, video. That is going to be your saving grace and a way to for free using your Instagram or Facebook account for free, build that organic traffic and serve and give value and educate and love your community again. If you're not comfortable with doing video, I have other videos on tips and, and tricks on to how to get comfortable doing video that will get your energy going and love the creativity that's going to just pour into you so you can pour that out to your community. Everybody that's in my Ignite Mortgage Loan Originator Academy knows that I teach power of video like crazy. So any business that you're in, I coach mortgage lenders, entrepreneurs, any more business that you're in, I can tell you this, video is the absolute best thing you can do to go out on a one-to-many versus the realtor coffees, the one-on-ones or whatever in, uh, business that you're in. When you market using the power of video, you can move mountains. So let me give you an example. Think about the painter or the plumber that's come to your house and they did a great job, but they never called you again. Imagine if they got your email address and your phone number and every single week they send you a video that says, here are the top trending uh, paint colors from Benjamin Moore this season, or here's a way to patch a hole without it looking all crazy and ruining your whole wall. Hey, here's one tip I have on this or this or that. Uh, if you're a plumber, Here's one way to fix a leaky faucet or when, when you notice water spilling out from the second floor, here's where to turn off your water. People don't know how to turn off their water. I didn't when I had that problem. Imagine if they did that, whether it's once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, who would be top of mind the next time you needed a painter or a plumber? It would be that person that sends you video, video, video all the time. Imagine if you're in HR and you send out videos once a month. Hey, here's the face behind human resources. I just wanna let you know that benefits enrollments is doing X, Y, and Z. Here's when the cutoff is. I just wanted to blast this out to make sure you didn't miss the email, whatever it may be. So they're gonna see a face to the human resources. They'll have more respect for you. You're creating that energy and that frequency in your, in your company where you're putting yourself on a positive outlook on in your position. A lot of people think HR is there to like hire and fire you or to like do payroll, right? If you put that human behind it, that's the power that video does. Now, if you're a mortgage lender, when you're doing video on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and you're val giving value and educating, that's the way that you're going to build what's called a parasocial relationship. A parasocial relationship is when people see you and you've inspired them, educated them, entertained them, made them laugh, made them love, made them get that motivation they were looking for, or understanding the market shifts, what's going on in the community, how many houses have sold, what rate interest rates are doing. Don't quote rates, by the way, exact rates online and do a bonehead move. You get yourself fired or get your NMLS a license taken away. When you're giving that value and educating and serving, right? You're building that parasocial relationship for when you are absolutely becoming top of mind for people when they go out there and they're like, I want to buy a house. Oh my gosh. When they think house or mortgage purchase, I want them to think Tiffany and team, right? So that's what I want you to do. So no matter what kind of business you're in, especially if you're a restaurant, do videos on how to cook the best Thanksgiving turkey, right? How to make a bomb grilled cheese that's going to knock everyone's socks off at home. Do fun things like that and post it on your Instagram, your business page, or whatever it may be. I teach that, by the way, in my, in my coaching class on, do I have a business page? Do I have a personal page? How many pages do I need? What do I say on it? So that's for another video, not this one. But 
There is power behind video when you use it correctly, when you're doing it to educate, entertain, or inspire, and not to get money. Law of attraction is going to work in your favor. Remember, if you do things just for money, that money is going to turn to dust in your hands faster than you can blink. I hope that helps. Go out there. My first video took 63 takes. I was sweating. I was crying. I didn't believe in myself. Now I can do 20 of them in 30 minutes. So go out there and do it. The only way to start is just to get out there, play in the traffic, try not to get hit by a car. You're going to embarrass yourself. You might fail, but you will end up succeeding. All right. Thank you. So let's talk about success. What does success look like? Now, if your answer is, I don't know, then that's okay, but you better get clear with yourself and the universe and your future clients or your future, whomever it is, of what that success looks like. So I read a statistic that 16% of people actually write down their goals and visualize the roadmap on how they're going to get there. Now, like 7% of people don't know where their actual goals are. They wrote it down and they can't find it. The other uh, percentage of people, they write it down, but they don't read it regularly. Now, here's the thing. When you're very clear on what success looks like to you, 1% of the people that actually write down goals that are successful, they read it every single day. And guess what? They're millionaires, millionaires. That is why only a small percentage of the world is actually millionaires because it's these little things that we do every single day to build that momentum. Money likes speed, right? Money is energy. That's why it's called currency. There's the energy behind money. So when you're putting in that energy and you're visualizing, you're putting out there in the universe that you know what that success looks like and every single day you move the needle forward to get to that, trust me, you will be successful beyond your wildest imagination. All right, so bottom line, the new F word that you should be super excited about is a funnel. If you are an entrepreneur, a mortgage lender, a real estate agent, funnels are the way to go to build your business. Now, what that looks like, very 50,000 foot view, right? Is think of it literally like a funnel. So there's the funnel. Edit this part out, <laughs> Farouk. <laughs> All right, so your new favorite F word, if you are a business uh, entrepreneur, mortgage lender, real estate agent, should be a funnel. So what is a funnel? I'm just going to give you the very short version of what it is. It's literally picture a funnel like this. So funnel is kind of casting out a big net. So this is the wider part, the top of the funnel is what they call it, the TOF. So the top of the funnel is all the awareness, like, hey, I'm Tiffany, I do mortgage loans, I'm giving value, I'm giving ed education, I'm serving people, and I'm just putting it out to as many people as I can, right? Then when you ask them to fill out their information, they work their way down into the funnel because they've been seeing your videos, they've been seeing your content, um, their, your email nurturing, whatever it is uh, that, that, that you have that's conducive to your business or congruent with your business, for lack of better words, is uh, when you move them into that and you actually obtain their information and they become somewhat of like a lead, right? Then the sales piece of it is when they actually become a customer. So it's like that conversion part where they fill out the application and when it's go time. So as a mortgage lender, you can do this organically. You don't, and I speak to that because I'm a mortgage lender myself and a mortgage lending coach. So I say this because you can do this organically by casting out a big net, showing everybody through value and education what you do, who you serve. You don't know who needs you at that moment. You're just throwing the information out there. When you do something that's called a lead magnet. So let's say you do a video and you say, uh, there's 50 things to think of when you are moving, buying, selling real estate. Uh, you know, for uh, not going to give you the whole script now, but um, the call to action basically would be something like if you're using a lead magnet of uh, DM me the word guide for a free homeowner's checklist for uh, when you're moving. And then you, they DM you the word guide. You ask them for their email address and they, you send over the lead magnet, the home checklist list guide, whatever it may be. And I'm getting tongue tied. So take this part out also. How to create a lead magnet. 
So what is a lead magnet? So I speak to mortgage lenders. I'm a mortgage lender coach, and that's what I also do. I've been doing it for 23 plus years at this point since literally right out of high school. So now you can kind of guess what my age is if you're curious. So I'm 21. No, I'm just kidding. So a lead magnet is this. Let's say you're doing a video and you're doing this on Facebook or Instagram and you're just educating. You're saying, hey, these are the top things to do when you're moving or here's a home buyer's guide, a checklist. And you're kind of going through that information. You can say, DM me the word to get a copy of this guide or DM me the word guide for a free blah, 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 whatever that is. That's the lead magnet. So if you work at a company like I do that has a whole marketing library, you can take something boring and canned. You can talk about that document, that lead magnet, and talk about whatever's inside of it and make it fun, educate. Remember, when you're doing social media, you're either educating, entertaining, or inspiring. So if you're educating on something within this canned, kind of boring, for lack of better words, document, but when you say at the end, DM me the word guide for a free X, Y, and Z, then they DM you the word guide, you send them a request for their email address, and you email them the PDF. Guess what? You just got a lead. It's somebody that is hot to trot, looking for a home buyer guide because they must be moving and their kids are moving, or somebody's doing something to where they needed that lead magnet or that guide, that PDF. Now you just capture their email address. So the good thing is you can nurture them. You can give them valuable information. Remember, an email is not to give them pumpkin pie recipes and all this stuff that's going to be like completely boring. A lead magnet and an email address com combined is a client for life until they end up going, oh my gosh, I remember Tiffany. She sent me that guide. She's been sending me this awesome, valuable content that's nurturing me, that's giving me value and education. Now I'm ready to apply for a loan because I found a house and because Tiffany gave me so much value and education on not calling the realtor first, but calling, getting pre-approved by her first, I'm going to call her right now. And it all started with your video about the lead magnet to get the email address, to get the nurture going, and you follow it like that. Lead magnets are awesome. People want free information. If you're in the lending business and you aren't taking canned stuff, making it your own, making it fun and or whatever it is, making it um, more interesting for uh, any way, shape or form other than the canned document, then you're going to win. People are going to gain that trust. They're going to know you like you and trust you. So get out there, go in your marketing library. If you don't have one, Canva, for example, you can go on and create freebies and documents and checklists and have fun with this. Now, one last thing. If you're the type of person that says, I don't know where to find my stuff in the marketing library. I don't know what Canva is. I heard about it, but, or I've never heard about it. I don't know how to do it. I'm telling you right now, take yourself out of the victim mentality. Get empowered by this time in the market. Get empowered by how far you've come. And if you're a lender that's been in it a significant amount of time, or even if you've been in it six months, Take that knowledge and get empowered by how far you've come. Congratulate yourself. When you step into that helpless mentality, that victim where you're like, I don't know where to find it, or my company doesn't give me that, or I might quit my company anyways, or I'm not good at video. That's the bad wolf talking. There's always going to be a bad wolf living inside of us. You want to feed the good wolf. You want to win and you want to see yourself thrive and not just survive this time in the market, but thrive. You can do that if you get empowered and use the things that you have access to to learn and build that skill. During this time, if you use the slower market opportunity to build up a skill to show up better for your clients, when this market changes, it's going to be an unstoppable situation for you. You will be invincible and uh, you'll make that money while you're serving at the same time. Last thing I'll say, remember, if you do things for money, the money will turn to dust in your hands faster than you can blink. So always come a place for an open heart and service and value and educating. Thank you. Subscribe if you want more of this. So guess what, people? Times have changed. Before, you were a salesperson selling vacuums in the 50s and 60s and sell, sell, sell. And everything was like that pressure cooker, that pressure sales. We're in a new time where people don't like that. So I personally never liked that ever, but the mentality has changed where people are wildly aware when you are saying, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. Nobody wants to hear, buy my thing, okay? Nobody cares how many awards you have. Nobody cares about 
any of that stuff, right? What they care about is the value and education and what you're bringing to the table to help them create a better future for their life, their business, their, their bank account, their children's life, inspire them, educate, entertain them, right? If you're going on social media saying, apply for a loan now, or call me with questions or book a call, why do they want to do it? What is the purpose in that? Think about those kinds of things. When you come from a place of service and not just selling, you are going to create a mountain of wealth and happiness. And it's going to be this kind of law of attraction where, you know, you get what you give in life, right? So if you give high pressure sales, you're going to get people that are rate shop you and, and bust your chops about um, programs and you should have done this better and you're attracting something. If you give the service and you're inspiring, educating, or entertaining people consistently, right? Consistency is always key in life. When you're doing that, you're going to attract back clients that love you. They know you. They trust you. They've been watching your videos and you're coming from a place, again, of service. So remember, serve, not sell. Thank you. If you want more of this, please like and subscribe. Facebook ads. It's a hot topic. It seems complex. It's complicated. It's confusing. It's a million of those things and all of the above, right? So Facebook ads are huge for your community if you're a mortgage lender or a real estate agent, all right? So I'm going to speak to the mortgage lending side because that's what I coach on. I'm a, a leading mortgage loan originator and mortgage coach. So I have Ignite Mortgage Loan Originator Academy, and I teach Facebook ads within my program. And here's why. If you are doing the old school things like chasing realtors, no disrespect to them, but they don't want to be chased and hounded, right? For business, you're expecting them to be the master marketer. If you take the ball and put it in your court and your success, your goals, your dreams, your visions, and you put it into your hands by creating Facebook ads, you're doing two things. So when you give the value, you educate and you serve, I'm all about serve and not just sell. So when you do them properly, keyword properly, Sometimes you'll get like some crazy emails or um, people that were just bored, they're scrolling online, they never respond to you. It's still a lead that you've got. It's still an email that you now own. The more you spend, the more you're going to make back in Facebook ads. But if you're just doing like a $10 a day uh, budget just for now to test the waters, it's going to help you two ways. So not only are you getting those leads, whether the good, bad, and the ugly, right? People, when they refer us business, sometimes people never respond um, to us. And we have to chase them. So Facebook ads are no different. They convert like magic when done properly and you have the proper amount of ad spend. But if you can only afford, especially during this time in the market, $10 a day for your ad spend, that's okay. Here's how it also helps you. It throws your ad out in, let's say you can choose like a 15 or 25 mile radius from your workplace or your, your house or your, your community that you want to market in. Facebook is going to take that and push your video out where it says sponsored and it's going to be an official ad, push it out further than just your organic followers and the people, you know, your mom, your dog, your people that see your videos. It's going to push it out to where more people see it. It's so important to do that because you want to stay top of mind. So a way to blanket yourself and brand in your community, blanket the 15 to 25 mile radius is by paying for the Facebook ads and doing it consistently. Now, with Facebook ads, you have to be consistent about it. If you're deciding that you're gonna do it for one month and you're gonna make one video and you think you're just gonna rock the house with it, that is a big problem. So the solution to that is you do three, four, or five videos. You say maybe different things. You put good copy in there. You have the right call to actions where it's not buy my thing, buy my thing. You're giving value. You're bringing awareness to a product, uh, a person that you've helped, the social proof, right? So when you do it properly and you blanket your air area, the 15 to 25 mile radius with the proper ad spend, you're getting the leads, you're getting the email address for the future, and you're also showing up in your community way more than you would if you have your 100 followers on Instagram and you're posting videos and you're wondering why you're not getting business. So for more information on Facebook ads, proper use of Facebook ads for your mortgage lending business, reach out to me at support at tiffanyrosecoaching.com. You can like and subscribe this for more information if you're a mortgage lender. If you're a homeowner and you're just curious about Facebook ads, and hopefully it helps you. You can run ads in any 
arena, any entrepreneurship, a business, a restaurant uh, in your community, anything. So if you are self-employed and you want to know more about uh, Facebook ads, please reach out to me at the same email address. I'm happy to serve and help as many people in this world as I can and do that through video. So like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. How to win friends and influence people using video. So I read that book, famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I absolutely loved it, but I'm going to give you the spin on it on how you as a mortgage lender can take video and use that to win friends and influence people. So, and do it authentically. Remember, if you don't do things authentically, people know. The universe knows, all right? I'm all about law of attraction. So here's what you do. You give value. Have you ever followed people on Instagram? And it's just so much value that you actually want to pay them, but you don't know how because they don't talk about buy my thing all the time. So quick tip on video. When you are doing it properly and you have a good hook, right? The hook is, uh, you know, are you struggling in the rent cycle right now? Or um, top three misconceptions for first time home buyers. That's what's called a hook. But when you give the meat of the video is the value in the education. When you teach on something, you're solving a problem for somebody. So when you do that on video, you're actually winning their friendship in a parasocial relationship, a one-sided friendship, right? Because you're giving them the information. They're like, oh my God, I love Tiffany. I've been watching her videos and she's giving me so much value. How do I pay her? How do I work with her? How do I buy a house with her? That's how you can influence people by communication on video and how you will win clients. The way to repel people and lose business is by using video and saying, hi, this is Tiffany. I work at so-and-so mortgage company and call me with questions and apply for a loan today. Nobody wants to hear that. So you've got to do video properly. I teach that in my coaching program, Ignite MLO Academy. So for more information on that, uh, click uh, email support at tiffanyrosecoaching.com or click like, subscribe, comment, and my team members will reach out to you. But bottom line, video, video, video will help you win friends and influence people like crazy. I want you to think about all the times that you've sat in front of a real estate agent, if you're watching this in your mortgage lender, and you've had coffee, happy hour drinks whatever it is. And of course, we're always the one paying the bill. I don't know why that is, but it's just kind of an industry standard, I guess. So imagine if you're doing that and talking about the same information, but you're bringing it online and you're speaking to thousands of people in your sphere of influence, whether it's your LinkedIn contacts, Instagram, Facebook, even if you only have two or 300 people and you're giving that value and education, isn't that more effective versus a realtor coffee or some kind of one-on-one -on -one meeting, right? So the way to really become a master influencer is through value and education and through the power of video. So I hope that helped. Go out there, be a doer, do it now, and I'll see you on the next video.